ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر الا نفسه اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم الحمني رشدي وعزني من شر نفسي امين يا رب العالمين اما بعد what i want to talk about today is um, essentially a response to a conversation i had with someone yesterday for those of you that may know to be in middle school or high school and be a muslim particularly if you're the only muslim there there's a good chance that people are going to make fun of the kids that are there so one one thing that i wanted to say to the parents was that if your child is the only muslim in high school or if your child is the only muslim in the middle school it's very important you have this conversation with your child that you know how is he dealing with the the people considering what they would be every every especially you got to realize that kids they don't think about what they say they just say it right and they don't think about they're hurting other people's feelings they just say it they hear something in tv and then they just say it and so the fact that if they are making fun of your kids is a bygone conclusion there's 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 no way that the uh that your children are not somehow in one way or another way dealing with uh with what the media is teaching them so having said that so one thing i wanted to say to the parents it's very important to have this conversation with your children especially if they're in middle school or high school or even in college and the other problem is that the muslim kids they don't know how to respond they don't know what to think about some of the things that are being said especially about isis and they don't know how to respond to the situation so and because of that a lot of muslims especially young muslims are being discouraged in regards to their islam especially as they grow older because you know as the saying goes if you can't win them join them right so if you can't win them then join them and a lot of kids uh and by the way care and other organizations have tried to do something in regards to this as you all know and some positive things have come out including the fact that some of the middle school high school uh, uh schools have started you know considering giving eid as a holiday for the entire school and so some positive things have come out but there was one aspect that i wanted to share with everyone in regards to especially isis and because the reason for this is there is almost at this point in the islamic world amongst the muslim scholars almost a consensus that the phenomenon of isis is a phenomenon that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had discussed in more than 50 ahadith in more than 50 of his sayings he had discussed the phenomenon of isis and the reason i mentioned this is that because it's important for high school kids to know not that they can necessarily respond to anyone by it but within themselves that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had forecasted that these certain events particularly the issue of isis 
would affect the Muslims. And so I wanted to share out of the 50 or so narrations on this issue, and again, you know, I have only a very limited time, so, you know, how do you, and, and this is an important science, uh, the science of hadith, how do you know which hadith fits with which hadith, and how do you know which, which sayings of the Prophet are connected with one another, this is a whole uh, subject in itself that I cannot go into, but you will see the connections between the different narrations and how this has to do with ISIS. But one thing I will say to make the whole issue clear, the Prophet ﷺ in many of his sayings, not one saying, I mean, there are narrations by Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, there are sayings by Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, there are sayings by, Abu Dhar, are sayings by, uh, by many companions of the Prophet ﷺ on this issue. And uh, they all point to the same basic fact, which is that, that from the area of Iraq there would be a certain group of people that would come especially in the beginning of the fitan, the beginning of tribu tri tribulations and towards the end of the times in the times of tribulations there would be a lot of chaos especially coming from the from this area called Najd which is east of Saudi Arabia, what we call today Jazeera al-Arab or Saudi Arabia east of that and there would be a certain type of people that would create, you can say, their own cult. They would create their own cult. And they, and you know, it's very interesting, the, the relationship, and, and sorry if I go off a little bit, a little bit off of the topic, but it's extremely interesting that, you know, a person's physiology, his physiology, the physiology of a person tells you a lot about their psychology in many ways. I'll give you one example. And in, in fact, I'll relate this to the physiology of the Prophet and his psychology. Like for example, if somebody is obese, very, very, uh, very heavy, uh, if somebody is overweight, then what happens is somebody is overweight has less energy, right? Somebody is overweight has less energy, which means then what? He is not so prone to get so angry. You know, it's stereotypical also that, uh, I won't go into the stereotypes, but a person who is who, 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 who is who, who, who is heavy set, who is obese, has a hard time uh, in terms of, of of energy because, and that's one of the reasons people one of the good and they're positive things too because when when you're obese, you're usually a good salesperson too, by the way, because you have uh, what some psychologists, especially one psychologist from Harvard University, says you begin to have. Uh, baby-like features where, you know, your, your body is more round and people trust a baby face, right? Are you going to trust, people will trust uh, a person that's overweight with someone that's, uh, some, they're going to trust somebody who's overweight in terms of letting them in their house, getting, give, giving them sales and so on and so forth, compared to maybe other, other body types. Now, why I, I said this is to say that point that your body type or anyone's body type tells you a lot about their psychology. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, for example, uh, he was what we call a thorax. Uh, he had his his built was so his lungs were big, and if your lungs are big, and I'll go into a little bit more details about the Prophet ﷺ. If your lungs are big, that means you're taking in more air. That means that your nose is fully developed to be able to take it, especially if you have larger lungs. If you have larger lungs and you're taking in more air, it means you can easily become angry too. There's more chances of you being able to get more angry quickly. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he was actually, of the, there's different body types, I've only mentioned two, two. But I wanted to mention this, you know, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet, Alam nasharah laka sadr, have we not opened your chest? Meaning, he was able to, you know, of course, spiritually, have we not opened your chest in terms of we not opened your understanding. But physically also, alam nashrah laka sadrak. Have we not opened your chest in a sense we have given you large lungs to take in a large amount of air, which gives the Prophet a large amount of energy. And this is why, and one of, one of the qualities, like I said, each body type has its qualities, and one of the qualities of the people that had this type of body type uh, is that, you know, when they would get, they, when they, they, their face would get red, like the Prophet's face would get red, 
because the Prophet would not be able, because they have a lot of uh, air coming in, so the, the face is, uh, the, the, gets red very quickly. Anyway, uh, the point I'm trying to make is the Prophet ﷺ, when he got upset, he had also this quality where you can see that he's he didn't have to even say anything. But the pro people around the Prophet would know he's upset because his face was red. And that is that particular body type where you have large lungs and you have broad shoulders and you can take in a large amount of air and because of the large amount of airs you have more energy and because of the more energy you're able to uh, express yourself uh, more uh, in terms of your emotions also. So the Prophet ﷺ, even though he had that, and you can say that, that energy, and, but he also had the ability to control that energy, which is why he didn't say anything, but he was just his face would get red. Now, I just said this as an example, to that the body types and what you do with your physiology and what you do with your body tells you something of your psychology. So, uh, there is this, now this group of people that the Prophet ﷺ talked about, in, like I said, over 50 sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, where he talks about this group of people and their physiology, right? He talks about their, 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 what, what they do and some of their qualities. And I'm saying this so that you understand that the Prophet said that they would come in the beginning of the, you could say, the downfall of Islam, which is out in the time of Ali radiallahu when they would come in the time of the fitan, which the Prophet said to Ali, say, Satakuna fitnatun, the fitans would start at the time of Ali radiallahu when, and they would, they would come every now and then, but they would come with its intensity in the beginning, and they would come with its intensity in the end. And so the Prophet ﷺ described these people and their mentality. And just, I'm going to mention a few of the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. Hopefully, if Allah allows, I'm able to put it together because, you know, I, if I really had time, I would sit down and say every single hadith in the Arabic language, explaining the authenticity of the hadith and how it connects with the other hadith and all of that, but I don't have time to do that, so I, I hope... I'm able to do it because I'll be not mentioning all the hadiths, but I'm going to choose some of the sayings of the Prophet. And hopefully that you'll be able to connect the dots of how the dots connect. And again, the reason I'm mentioning this because especially the people that are here and the people that are going to watch this on the video, especially the youth, I want them to know that the Prophet ﷺ knew about these calamities and knew about these difficulties. And he was very upset that these things would occur. I mean, he was not, he was very upset, and I'll even share with you how upset he was. Um, so, uh, just to, the one hadith that everybody mentions, and by the way, I, I was saying this, that there's almost a consensus now in the Muslim world, amongst the Muslim scholars, whether you're from Egypt, whether you're from Pakistan, whether you're from India, wherever you're from, there's almost a consensus for the people of Hadith and the people who know the Islamic scholarship and the people that know the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, when they look at the situation uh, that is happening in Iraq, particularly with ISIS, they are able to connect. If you know the sayings of the Prophet, then it's easy to connect. And so those people are able to easily connect those sayings of the Prophet ﷺ to the situation that's happening with ISIS. And that should at least give some comfort to the young kids who are being mocked at in school because there's hardly any Muslim kid that's not made fun of at this point in, in high school and in middle school. It's just hap it's just so rampant uh, that that it's just amazing. And and so if your kids and again this is really one of the more major points that I want to mention that if your kids are if he's the only Muslim in school and you think no one makes fun of him because he's Muslim that's just, it's very, very unlikely. So if you know relatives, if you know friends, if you know other family members, you know, he's the only kid going to school, and he's the only kid in school, and he's brown skin, right, not white skin, chances are people make fun of him and make comments, derogatory comments of different types. Chances are something happens. Um, I, you know, I grew up here, and I was in, 
uh, in school, college, when the first per, uh, Persian, uh, the first Gulf War happened, the first one, with George Bush Sr., way back then. I was uh, in college in those days, and I remember people saying derogatory terms at that time, you know, when I was going to high school, you know, and, and, and they, use, they use different terms now, and they use different terms then, but it was, you know, oh, are you, you know, one of those, uh, you know, whatever they said, right? So, so, I had to deal with it 20 years ago. Kids nowadays are going to have to deal with it even more. Because that's just a reality. And anyone who thinks, any parent who thinks, oh, they don't, my son is not confronted with these things, you're not living in reality. Every single child that I have asked in our Sunday school, for example, that's in my class, because I've asked these questions to our kids, you know, everyone more or less deals with it their own way, but everyone confronts it, right? Some people confront it by challenging other people. Oh yeah, what do you, well, you know, they, they'll go into like a cut-down match. Some people will deal with it that way. Other people will deal with it by just avoiding the people that make fun of them and they'll stick with the friends that they do have. Other people deal with it by, by you know, joining them in one way or the other. So it's very important that the parents, they talk to their children uh, about uh, being in school and about being, and you know, these things, uh, these things of being made fun of, especially in high school, especially by your peers, these are not small things. You know, this is why bullying in school is such a big subject, especially in psychology. Uh, it's, a, it's a big subject because it's a big, it's, it's, it leaves an emotional mark. It affects people emotionally to have been, to grow up in a place where your own peers were making fun of who you were. And so it's very important that uh, we take this into consideration. You should talk to other family members, family members about the situation, and, and especially if their kid, you know, if there's schools, for example, where there's a lot of Muslims, right, where there's a lot of Muslims, there's some schools, like in Michigan and Chicago, where the same high school, there's a lot of Muslims. That situation is different. But if there's a situation where your son's the only one in school, and everybody else is listening, I mean, it's not even the children, sometimes it's even the teachers. But anyway, I wanted to mention some of the sayings of the Prophet so that at least the youth would keep in mind that yes, the Prophet did know about this. And he did have sensitivity to this. And he was very upset about this. And so I want to, and also, of course, in this, I want you to also consider that the Prophet and him mentioning these events that they would happen and these people, they would come. Uh, these people that have these certain traits that we're going to inshallah talk about, that they would come. The Prophet saying this should also give them a certain uh, rest and peace in their heart in the sense that the Prophet prophesies this because this is a fitan, it is a chaos, it is a trial for us because our kids when they're made fun of they feel bad and they, they resent being Muslim, they resent Islam a lot of times. So inshallah in my second khutbah because I haven't started in any of the, I wanted to mention about 17 sayings of the Prophet on this issue, so let's see how far I get today uh, before time is up. So inshallah in my second khutbah I will start with the sayings of the Prophet on this issue. Uh, if everyone can do me a favor, please everybody move forward. And uh, and when there's not enough space, I will tell other people to go to the other building. Issue. 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 <laughs> well, well, then the people that made it, made it. And the people that can't make it, can't make it. The people are blocking people should go out first. Okay, inshallah, I'm going إن الحمد لله أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد
So, again, I want to go quickly on the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ regarding this issue. And so just so it's clear, I'm talking in the context of our kids to this, but I want to try to connect the dots also. So, a man comes to the Prophet ﷺ from one of the tribes. I won't go into which tribe this is. And he says to the Prophet ﷺ, اِعْدِلْ اِتَّقِ اللَّهِ Oh Muhammad ﷺ, do justice, fear Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Who will obey Allah if I disobey him? And about this person, when this person, because let me give you the background. The Prophet ﷺ had, was distributing, and Abu Dhar al-Bakhari uses the word in his narration about this event. Because you got to realize this same event is being witnessed by many people, right? So Abu Dhar has his uh, spin on the what he saw and Abu, Abu, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri has his spin on what, so you got to combine them and get the overall story. So anyway, Abu Dhar al-Fadi says, you know, the Prophet was distributing the spoils of war to his left, to his right. He was giving the wealth of, uh, of the spoils of war to everyone. But one man, he came to the Prophet and he said, I'dil, O Muhammad, do justice. And the Prophet said, who will do justice if I'm not doing justice? And there are other companions who say the Prophet said something else. I'm not going to go into that. But then, when that man left, the Prophet told his special companion who was the, who you kept the secrets of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet told him, according to other nations, other people, but the Prophet told him that from his progeny will come people, Quran. they will read Quran, and it will not leave their throats. Just as you throw an arrow, and just as the arrow does not come back to the bow. And then the Prophet in, in, in other narrations, other events, he describes these people. Okay, so now I'm going to start describing them. The Prophet says, uh, when the person left, when the person says left, he said, Inna min di'di, indeed from his progeny, O man yakra'un al Quran. They will read Quran, but it will not leave their throats. What does it mean? They will read Quran and it will not leave their throats? I will explain in a little bit. In another saying, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, There will be a people that will come in the end of times. They will be young in age. The people that join these cults, like ISIS, for example, they're young in age. They're not very mature people. They're very immature people. Uh, is there a reason we turned off this light? The Prophet said, asnan sofahaw ahlam. And their thinking will be like retarded people. They will not think straight. They will be retarded. This is the Prophet saying this about these people and where everything the Prophet is described by the Prophet, where they will come from, what their qualities are, what their traits are, and so inshallah, we'll, uh, I'm just going to try to connect the dots. The Prophet said, and by the way, if I had time, I would go into the authenticity of these sayings of the Prophet Most of these sayings that I'm reading, by the way, are both in Bukhari and Muslim. Most of them are muttafaqun alayh, in Bukhari and Muslim, this, the sayings that I'm saying right now. Meaning they are, they are in, in the ones that I've read so far, there's more than, uh, they're mutawatir, there they're, they're, they're many companions narrating the same event. The Prophet ﷺ says, لَا يُجَاوِزُ إِمَانَهُمْ حَنَاجِرُهُمْ Their iman will not leave their throats. And then the Prophet says, uh, then the Prophet says they will leave Islam like an uh, arrow leaves a bow. Now this leaves, the arrow leaves a bow is a special term used specifically for this group that we will be talking about. Shh. Then the Prophet ﷺ, in another narration, he says, There will come out a people from the east side, meaning the east of him, this is Iraq. Okay? There will come out a people from the east side, which is Iraq, which will become more clear in the, in, in the coming upcoming hadith. يقرؤون القرآن لا يجاوزوا uh, they will read Quran and Quran will not leave their throats. What, then what does he say? Uh, he says uh, that he is asked, 
Who are these people, O Prophet? Ma, a companion says, Ila ma simahu. What is their quality? What is their trait? How do you know who they are? Who are we talking about? And the Prophet says, their habit will be that they will always be shaving their heads. This is not an individual shaving their heads. So if somebody has individual shaved heads, they will be collectively, as you know, you ever heard of uh, skinheads? Like uh, this mentality of groups and cults. Especially cults have this tendency, for some reason, to, to always shave their heads. Cults tend to have this, so meaning they have this cult type tendency. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will read Quran, but their quality will be that they will be very, they will be very, they will be very habitual in their habit of cutting their hair, just being skinheads, as we call it. And this is literally the word in Arabic that the Prophet has used for them. Not just that they cut their hair, but that they're like skinheads. They can't keep their hairs cut. Uh, uh, so the uh, uh, qala So one narration says their their quality will be that they cut their hair, and another narration says qala thus be that they will be like skinheads. They will keep cutting their he heads. In another narration, okay. So again, I don't have time, I have only five minutes left, so let me just mention this. So the Prophet said, وسلم, like I said, there are more than 50 narrations on this, that in the beginning of the time of the Fitan, and the Fitan starts with the time of Ali, anhu, there was a group of people, skinheads, okay, who used to read Quran very beautiful. The Prophet said, you will consider your salah nothing compared to their salah. You will consider your fasting nothing compared to their fasting. You will consider their, their khushu nothing compared to your khushu. But they will be the dogs of the hell. In another narration, again, I don't have time, otherwise I'd read the Arabic. And, and the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will say things sweeter than honey. They will say things with their mouth sweeter than honey, but their actions will be the worst of the people. And he said, if you were found in a situation, where you had to fight them, if you killed them, you would be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the situation in Iraq right now. You meet these types of uh, young people who have no mind, and they're just, it's kill or be killed situation. And so the Prophet, if you kill them, you'll get rewarded. You're not going to be uh, held accountable, because what will happen? You're confronted with a Muslim, and you're going to think, oh, I'm going to kill this Muslim who has this long beard, I'm going to kill him, right? This is what happened. In fact, I don't have time right now to go into this. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, from the area of Najd, which is Iraq, people will come out, قَوْمٌ يَقْرَعُونَ Quran. They will read Qur'an, and Qur'an will never leave, except their recitation will be beautiful, but it will be nothing but beautiful recitation. Again, this is Riwahu muslim this is in Sahih Muslim. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, it, it, it has been said, يا أيها الناس أو mankind إني سمعت الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول علي رضي الله عنه نريد the prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم يخرجون قوما من أمة يقرؤون القرآن ليس قراءتهم إلى قراءتهم شيئا there will be a people for my people that will come out and your their recitation will be way better your recitation will be nothing like their recitation they will recite so beautifully and the prophet said وَلَا صَلَاتُكُمْ إِلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ بِشَيْءٍ And you will say your salah is nothing to their salah. And the Prophet says, وَلَا سَيَامُكُمْ إِلَىٰ سَيَامِهِمْ بِشَيْءٍ And they, their sayam, their fasting will be nothing compared to your fasting. And يَقْرَعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُ لَهُمْ And they will read Qur'an and they'll think, oh, we are the people of Qur'an. They will, they will be so confident. But the Prophet says, وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ but it will be against them. This reading of Qur'an will go against them on the Day of Judgment. Again, there are so many sayings of the Prophet The Prophet says, These people, these Muslim skinheads, these Muslim cults, that have, this is not Islam, this is a cult. And the Prophet said about them, he said, They are the worst of creation, the Prophet said. They are the worst of creation, uh, and the Prophet said this very interesting statement, which has to do with the current situation as well as the situation when it first happened. Which is, the, we, usually in Islamic theology, we call this group, the name that the scholars have given this group is 
There's many names, but one of the most popular names is Khawarij. These people are the Khawarij. These are people who kill Muslims using ayat of the Qur'an that have been come down for non-Muslims, for example. Or they, they do takfir on Muslims, they kill Muslims, and they consider this to be part of their Islamic duty. This is one of the demented ideas that they have. And the Prophet, it's not like the Prophet didn't say this. The Prophet said that they will take the ayat of Qur'an and, 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 and exploit them wrongly, and apply them wrongly. But I haven't come to that saying of the Prophet The Prophet said, uh, let me go to, again, I want to, سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّةِ اِخْتِلَافٌ And uh, this uh, very important point that I forgot to, I read it, but I forgot to clarify this. The Prophet says, when the Khawarij come out, when this group comes out, they will be fighting, the, two groups will fight against them in the end of the times. Two groups will fight against them. Today, ISIS is being fought against two groups. And the Prophet ﷺ said the group that is closer to the, to the truth will defeat them. So if you know who are the two groups that are fighting the Khawarij, okay, one is the Kurds. In fact, I don't know if you know this, some Americans, Australians, British, they went and joined the forces of the Kurds okay, to fight against the ISIS. And they left the Kurd people saying, oh, these are communists. So it's like they, 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 they felt it was a no good situation. We can't fight the Islamists and be helping the communists. So they left the communists and came back to America. There was a whole article about this. But the other people that are fighting against ISIS are the Muslim brothers in Syria, who the Prophet did dua for. And there's a whole event about the Prophet doing dua for the people that will be in Syria and so on and so forth. We'll come to that, inshallah. The Prophet said, سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّةِ اِخْتِلَافٌ وَفِرْقٌ There will come a time, when, whenever fitan comes, especially in the time of tribulations, this type of group always comes out. Young, uneducated, cult-oriented Muslims who, use, who, who think that they're on Islam, but they're not in Islam. They create a cult around themselves because of the fitan, because of the chaos, because of the, arc, the anarchy they call, call, create. A, 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 a situation around themselves where then they use this to their advantage. And the Prophet used some, a very interesting word, you know. One thing is that they kill other people. But that's not what ISIS does. ISIS actually cuts the heads of people. And this has been mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ that they would be a people that cut the heads of the people. They would cut the heads of the people. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> The Prophet says, uh, I'll go to another hadith because this is a long one. This one's also long, okay. Huwa, the Prophet said, in talking about the Khawarij, the Prophet said, oh, time is running out, okay, so I should finish. The point being that I just wanted to tell the youth that the Prophet was very upset that this, in fact, I'll tell one last hadith, but you have to understand it in its context. And the context is, the Prophet knew whatever is destined to happen will happen. It's not that after, before mentioning this hadith, which is Sahih by the way, and it wasn't the Prophet's intent to change history, but his intent was to make the point. And that is that the Prophet saw a man praying. This hadith is Sahih. He was praying in the masjid of the Prophet and this cultish type people that would come out, the Prophet said to Abu Bakr, who would kill this person for me? And Abu Bakr said, I'll go kill him. Abu Bakr went to the masjid and he thought, maybe the Prophet's testing. Here's a Muslim, he's praying, he has so much khashu, he's so much concentrating his prayers, he's a Muslim. So he came back to the Prophet and, and the Prophet then said, okay, Omar, will you do it? Omar goes, and you know Omar, right? Omar goes, and Omar thinks Abu Bakr didn't kill him, so I'm not, if Abu Bakr didn't kill him and he came back, then who am I to make this decision? Then, he told Ali, you go and kill him. And Ali, of course, out of them all, he's the most serious when it comes to the sword, okay? 
because I'll tell you a story about Ali. Oh, we don't have time. We don't have time. But you know, the Prophet, when Fatima was pregnant the first time, the Prophet said him, asked him, what will you name your son? Ali said, Harb, means war. I'll name my son War. The Prophet, then when Fatima was a, a pregnant the second time, but by the way, the Prophet said, you will name him Hassan. The second time Fatima was pregnant, he asked Ali, what will you name your son? He said, Harb, War. Okay, the Prophet said, no, Hussein. The third time, the third time a child was born, he died a few months later. But the Prophet asked Ali, what will you name your son? He said, Harb, War. He said, no, his name will be Muhsan. So Ali, you know, he is totally into the battle scene, right? So just me pointing this out, Ali went to kill him, but he was gone. Meaning it wasn't in the destiny for it to be. The point was not that this event itself is just making the point that the, when this happened, the Prophet said, had you killed him, had one of you killed him, had one of you been able to kill him, it would have, you would have saved my ummah, my people, a great calamity from that would befall on them toward the end of times. And last hadith I want to mention, the Prophet said this group would be defeated by the Muslims, and the, these, they, would grow into a small, they would grow into more and more factions, meaning there would be one big group, then smaller, and then smaller, and smaller, until the last of them joins the army of the Jad. This is one of the sayings of the Prophet Again. Uh, they have all of these qualities of shaving their head, uh, being young, reading Quran very beautifully, uh, you know, their salah, their... Er, anyway, you get the point, so let's pray, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa kina adab anna. Rabbana ghalamna anfusna wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kuna min al-khasirin. Allahumma taj'al khilafat al-muslimin fi hadhi al-ard. Amin, Allahumma amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The point of this khutbah, by the way, those who were in the beginning, was not to talk about the khawarij just for historical purpose, but it was to show to the youth that the Prophet was aware of these situations. Because the youth, as you know, they're mocked at uh, because of the situation in school. So I just wanted to share that the Prophet knew that this would happen. And what is very important and interesting about what the Prophet said is that the Prophet has said that these people, they kill Muslims. I mean, we don't realize that we're the victims of ISIS, not others. ISIS is not at war with any other country. ISIS is at war with Muslims themselves. So, inshallah, inshallah,